how does dry ice work? Oh, it's just frozen carbon dioxide. Oh. So here's the difference. Here's the difference. You have a block of frozen H2O and a block of frozen CO2. It turns out the air pressure on Earth is high enough to allow the ice to melt and sustain a liquid state. The CO2 under air pressure, normal air pressure, it wants to melt, but it can't sustain a liquid and it goes straight to gas. If we had much higher air pressure, you could have CO2 melt and have liquid CO2. So what happens if I reduce the air pressure. Well, the transition from ice to water is still the same. It's not affected, but the boiling point is affected. As you know, cooking times have to be adjusted on mountaintops because when you boil water, it's not 212 degrees. Depending on the height of the mountain, there's less air pressing down that's preventing it from boiling. The boiling point is not some absolute fact about the water. It has to do with what the air pressure is sitting above it. If you have extremely high air pressure, water has to go to a much higher temperature before it boils. So the boiling point of water that's reported in all textbooks is at sea level, at one atmospheric pressure. If you start reducing the atmospheric pressure, it's 210 degrees, 200 degrees, 190 degrees, 180 degrees. So now watch, I'm not done with you. You keep reducing the air pressure. Boiling point keeps dropping. It's 170 degrees, 150, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. What happens? The ice melts and becomes water. The water evaporates and becomes steam. And all of that's happening at 32 degrees. There is an atmospheric pressure for which Water, ice, and steam coexist, and it's called the triple point of water, and all ingredients have a triple point.